All right. So this is Brightwood College, all right? Um, did any of you guys go to college anywhere else before? Like, give me an example where, where else. You're an instructor, though, right? You're right. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Where'd you go to school at? Um, IUN. IUN? And what'd you study? Um, radiology, and then I was also doing the dental assisting there. Okay. And who else raised their hand? Where'd you go to? Um, Purdue Northwest. Okay. I went for you? nursing. Okay. And did you graduate? Did you drop out? No, change your I, mind? Uh, yeah, I changed my mind. I realized I didn't want to be a nurse. You didn't want to? <laughs> you, didn't, you don't want to? Why is that? I was just not really into it. Like I was already in the program, but then I realized I'm like, wait, I don't like this. I wasn't happy with it. And then good, I like, good. And I actually like it. Okay, we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Uh, who else raised their hands? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? South And what'd you study? Same thing. Same thing. What's your story? Why'd you get out? Um, or did you? Did well, you? because um, when I was in high school, there was an mm -hmm. LPM program, like a nursing program, and I guess those teachers kind of scared us away. <laughs> and then when um, Where'd you go to school? Where'd you go? Um, Midwestern Career College. Okay. And where'd you study? Um, cardiology technology. And did you graduate? Did you pass? Yes. Okay. So then why are you here? Because I just want to do more. If I was something better than this. Okay. Are you working in that field right now with that degree? No. Okay. So you just throw all that money away? Huh? <laughs> I'm just asking, do it, the, the, yeah. the Elvira already knows if you guys, I don't know if any of you guys are on my Facebook page or not. I have a, a Life Power LLC. It's really a health and fitness business, but what I always try to tell people is that it's a health, it's a success school uh, that uses um, fitness as the tool. Who, who else went to school that I didn't ask? Who, who else? There was like five or six other hands. Well, what'd you, what'd you do? Um. <laughs> Dental hygiene. Yeah. It was really boring. It was boring. Yeah. <laughs> did you Did you graduate? No, I did not. Okay. Um. So why are you here? I I, I wanted to stay in the dental field. Okay. So anybody that didn't go to school, who who did not raise their hand originally? Okay. So why are you here? Um. I am here because. Um. I'm not young anymore. And You're always as young as you think you are. True. But um You gotta get that out of your head real quick. If you're gonna be around me for this hour or whatever, however long, today you're young, alright? Um I just needed a fresh start. I needed to um I worked in the medical field for twenty five years. In what and, where, where, what way? Um in all kinds of aspects reception, dental offices. The last position that I've worked with for, I worked for um, a bone, skin, and tissue company. Okay. So I started there part-time. I worked there 11 years. So who, who talked you into this? <laughs> this? Um, I didn't want to go into medical. I didn't want to do medical assisting. Looks, it sounds like you're looking for something, right? So, yeah, I just, um, it seemed interesting to me. It seemed like something that, um, I would want to do. Okay, good. Um, I'm not, just so you guys know, I'm not going to put, I'm not trying to put any one of you on blast. I'm not, I, I promise you 1000%, if that's even possible, 100%. Um, my goal being here is genuinely to try to help you individually through my story. Um, I, I, I want to thank Elvira for having me here because uh, we, we've been on a, um, I've known her for 20 years now, right? It's been about the, at least at least 20 yeah. years. And um, she told me that she told you her story. She shared her story with you, um, which I don't think she even is aware of it, but her story is inspirational to me as well. Uh, you told me not to cuss, I want to say shit right now, so I'm saying shit. <laughs> uh, I wanted to, the, what I wanted to say is like, damn, I'm going to get emotional. Here I am, I'm supposed to be talking to you guys, I'm going to get emotional myself. Um, it's, I'll, I'll tell you this, 
uh, can I ask you, Matt, you know, you're not on camera or nothing like that, but you said you're you're not young anymore. How old are you? I'm 47. All right, I'm me too. All right. I so. just felt like I didn't want to be in the medical field anymore. I think people like kind of wanted to, when I came here, they wanted they wanted to pigeonhole me and be like, oh, you want to go into medical? I'm like, no. I'm like, I want to do something different. Good for you. So. Yeah. Don't let nobody pigeonhole you. Yeah. In I any in any way, I, shape, or form. Who's the Who's the oldest here? I'm 47. I got you guys I'm can the see. Oldest. Okay, who's the youngest? Who's 18? 19? You're 19? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what I wanted to say is, is that I'm talking about Elvira having a, a uh, inspirational story. She asked me to come here because she thinks my story is inspirational. Um, that is why you have me here. <laughs> um, I asked her, <coughs> so excuse me. So I have Life Power LLC. Hey, we're gonna have to kick you out of here with I'm that sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So I like to talk natural, I like to be real. I don't like to be pigeonholed. I don't like to be put into a box. Um, I don't like people telling me what I'm supposed to be, what I have to be. But I guarantee you, let me assure you this, that I didn't come out of the womb like this. Um, most of us, uh, we're taught by society how to act, how to think, how to be. You should be this, you should be that. Uh, I'm Puerto Rican by, net, by descent, but Hispanics have a certain way of doing things, right? The black in, uh, community has a different way of doing some, some things. The white people think this, hey, it's, this is how it's supposed to be. Man, fuck all of that. She asked me not to cut, sorry, sorry, hey. Hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. We, we, I, let's put it this way. If you're gonna live in a box, like I understand this is a professional setting, right? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to tone that down, but I just want you guys to understand that. I'm, I'm real. I'm a real person. I'm not a suit and a tie. That's why I came wearing a shirt, a t-shirt. I thought about, okay, well, I'm gonna go talk to some girls. They're going to college. I don't have a college degree. So you're listening to a guy who doesn't have a college degree. Why? I'm, I'm wearing shorts. This is, this is my choice, right? If I'm supposed to be what they want me to be, then whoever they is, let them be. But nobody's gonna make me be what I wanna be. And, and one of the fastest ways to be unsuccessful is try to please everybody else. Listen to what I'm saying. The fastest way to be unsuccessful is be what everybody else wants you to be. I have clients, we, like I said, this is a health and fitness business that I offer. I've been doing personal training, uh, strength training, run coaching, triathlon coach. I've been, I've been a coach for as far back as 30 years, personally, okay? That doesn't mean I've, for 30 years I've done coaching. I mean, I've had other jobs, I've had this, because I was basically a lot like you guys trying to say, okay, well, where am I, where do I fit in in this world, right? So everybody here has, has graduated high school, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody here has had parents. Those parents put their belief system into your head because that was put into their head by society or by other parents. So along your course of life, you've been shaped and conditioned as to what you should or should not be. And in the process, you're looking for answers. So that's why I started off asking you guys, why are you here? What made me choose to go into that? So some of you started off at another college trying something else because, man, nurses make this much money. Or, you know what, it, it's a, the medical profession, it's always gonna be around, people are always gonna be sick. But how many of you are here because you want to be here? Raise your hands. Okay. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, I was speaking to another young lady. She's a client last night. She does uh, makeup. Okay. And a lot of times, you know, people, they don't, they don't think you can make a lot of money doing makeup. But I have another friend uh, that I knew from the neighborhood and she's doing makeup for stars. Celebrities. But she started out of her basement because she just loved doing makeup. Whatever you enjoy doing, follow your passion. Enjoy it. I don't care if it's needlepoint, 
if it's cleaning teeth, if it's selling underwear. Seriously, as crazy as that sounds, love whatever you're doing. How do you go about that? So Elvira asked me to come out here and, and speak to you guys. And I said, okay, well, what do you, you know, this is, this is a little bit different. This is a little bit odd. I mean, I've, I've spoken in front of rooms with uh, over 150 millionaires. I've had the audience of, of a guy who's a billionaire for hours and hours and hours talking. And he ain't no better than anyone in this room. And he'll tell you that. I asked, man, picking his brain, man, how'd you, how'd you become so successful? Man, you know, if you think about it, th talking about billionaire. Everybody, like most people are going to be like, man, I'll be on the beach. I'm having margaritas. I got a yacht. You know what that guy loves? He loves work. He loves working. It ain't the money that fuels him. It's the work. It's the passion for the work. So originally, so, you know, like I said, Elvira asked me to come out here and talk to you guys and, and you know, okay, well, am I going to talk about health and fitness? And she said, well, yeah, that's part of it. You know, business, yeah, that's part of it. What, what did you want? Tell them what you, what you asked me to come and talk about. Well, my class, as we know, the beginning of our course started off with nutrition and the healthy aspect of it. And then it kind of snowballed because part of what I do here and my class will tell you, all the time promote positivity let's make this happen don't get burned out when you get to this part don't quit keep going it's only a nine month course you can do this and it's making sure that they maintain that positive attitude okay, okay. so i like that all right for me why do i why do i why do i label life power as a success school that uses health and fitness as the tool they work together you love your body? Does anybody here not love their body? Okay. Stand up, stand up. Let's just get, let's just get. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. No, don't be ashamed of your, you're, you're being brutally honest, right? It ain't like they, they didn't see you raise your hands. Stand up, all right? So I would say about half the room. Go ahead and, go ahead and have a seat. You hate your body. That's all you got. That's all you got. Let that sink in for a second. Without that body, what do you got? You're in a casket. You're in a casket. You're, 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 you're fading away into nothing. Any of you that stood up got kids? Okay. Your kid don't give a crap. <laughs> Your kid don't care that you have a belly roll or a certain percentage of body fat. Mm -hmm. He loves your body, she loves your body. This, this, you guys are all here for studying and you want to get a job and you want to get a degree, let me get this, let me go do this. And that, none of that means anything without that body. So you gotta take care of that body. That body is all you got. And here's the thing, the better state of health that that body is in, the better you're gonna perform. The better a mom you're going to be, the better coworker you're going to be, the better student you're going to be. You don't understand how that all works, but there's so much that goes on through your digestive system that affects your memory, your sight, your your uh, hearing. There's you, there's nothing without your health. You got nothing in this life. I don't care how much that guy that's got a billion dollars, those millionaires, those people, those Jennifer Lopez and celebrities, Beyonce you see on television, they ain't got nothing if they don't have their body. We ain't talking about them if they don't have their body. So that's why I'm so strong on taking care of your health. Now, you may not like how the body, your, your, how the, the state of your body, you may not like how that body looks right now, but understand that that's all you got. Now, let me ask you this. I just want to use you as an example, okay? Because you didn't want to stand up. <laughs> That's how you got made an example. <laughs> so it, you got a boyfriend, husband, man, girlfriend, but I don't, no. nothing? Okay, who, who, who said they don't like their body? Uh, you have a boyfriend? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm married. Okay, if your husband said he didn't like your body, how would you feel? <laughs> you, how would you feel? Good, bad? It wouldn't make you happy, 
You wouldn't be like, man, I love my man. <laughs> huh? You would probably cuss them out. So why is it okay for you to say you hate your body, but it's not okay for somebody else to say they hate your body? If you went to the store and tried on a dress, you go to a wedding, you're going to go to a quinceanera, you're going to go wherever, right? Mm -hmm. And you're trying on an outfit and, man, I'm going to look good, I can't wait. And then the clerk comes up to you and be like, I don't know, I don't like that on you. Your body's not right. You don't look right. Or oh, you got to be all jaw. I can't cuss again, so. <laughs> but you already are. You're, you're cussing in your head right now as I'm talking about that. You're saying, man, who are you to tell me? How, how I should, I look bad? Well, you don't look so good yourself. But why is it okay for you to get mad at them, but it's not okay for you to get mad at yourself? Give that some thought. You're really hypo being a hypocrite. You're really being a hypocrite when it comes to that. So I'm gonna challenge you to re redirect how you think, how you look at yourself. You're talking about I'm not young anymore. And, and? so you trying to tell me I'm old? <laughs> I get it. No, I can't do everything I used to do. I can't do the same things that my daughter or my son could do. But hey, but I'm doing a lot more now because I have that experience. Life has been behind. I got, man, I'm a better, way better man now at 47 than I was when I was younger. I got experience. And trust me, half of these girls that are, these, that are half your age, how much experience? How much are you sitting? How much do you just like roll your eyes when they're complaining about you? are like, girl, you have no idea. Wait till you get older, right? Yeah. So there's a positive there. There's a positivity there. No, never use your age as a negative. Don't use anything as a negative. You don't like your body, you gotta start changing that around today. Today, right this minute. See, it's unfortunately for you guys, you guys got a chance to meet Coach Lewis and unfortunately this message that is being put into your heads, you don't get to walk out of here and say, go back to living your life the same way you used to be because God is using my voice to reach you and honor to be standing in front of you guys talking. This is not something I'm taking for granted. But if you don't love yourself, then how can you love somebody else? If you don't love that body, then why should that body love you? I'm gonna hit you with something, think about this. If you don't love that body, why should it take care of you? You just said, all of you guys, you all frowned. As soon as I said, if that clerk looks at you as kind of sideways, you got upset about it. Well, how does that body act when you don't love it? So that's the number one relationship you have is with yourself. The self-talk that you have when you're laying in bed at night and you're wondering, how did I end up here? Or you're, you're like thinking about that celebrity, you're watching the Oscars or the Emmys, you man, I wanna, I wanna be like that. Really? But you're sitting in your chair all frumpy, you're just mad, you complain about the weather, you complain about this, but you don't love what you have. So I, I, everybody I meet, everybody I deal with, I have this talk with them. Because it starts with loving yourself. You gotta love yourself. You can't love your children. You, you do, you have feelings for them, right? You care about them, but you're not genuinely loving them until you learn how to love yourself. And taking care of yourself is not selfish. Well, I ain't got time, I gotta do this, I gotta make food, I gotta go do, do this, go do that. No, you gotta take care of you. Because if you don't take care of you, you can't take care of them. And they don't care about the Jordans that you're buying them. They don't care about the soccer practice you're taking them. They want mommy and daddy to be in their life. That's priority number one. What's this all got to do with Coach Lewis? What's he talking about? So this is why she asked me to come and talk. She's talking about a success story, talking about health and fitness. Let me tell you guys something. This is where you guys are at. I hope that you guys really take this. this I hope that my message... I get the right message across with you guys. This is what I want to tell you. You're ungrateful. See, I would like to use a lot more cuss words right now. <laughs> In all honesty, I shook everyone's hand to let you guys know I'm, I'm genuinely wanted to meet the individual. I wanted to look at each one of you guys in the face, in the eyes, because I want you to know that I'm here because I genuinely care. Give a S if you want me to use my language, all right? I care, 
but he don't even know me. How's this dude even gonna talk about he cares about me? Because at one point I didn't care about me. I get it. I understand. Well, I went to the military because my dad, that's, my dad wanted me to either get a job at the steel mill, some kind of labor job, or go to the military. That wasn't me. And I did it, and I was miserable for it. I've tried to commit suicide. I have a scar on my neck right now. Some of you watching on, on the Facebook Live don't realize that. That's a broken person, man. Broken. Nobody in this room, could, look how silent, you guys all got all serious on me here. Listen, we, nobody in this world is perfect. Nobody's got it. You know, so Facebook, putting all the good shit, right? But, but when you're sitting in your bed, burying your head in your pillow, crying, you ain't putting that out there. The news, they, they want, you know, the, the celebrities, they, oh yeah, they look good, man. Look at The Rock, look at J-Lo, look at Beyond, man, they're living the life. They cry, they struggle. There ain't a person alive that has not struggled. You guys were, I was invited to speak to you guys because I was called a success story. You're a success story. You don't see that. Look, all the, you guys are like, man, he lost me on that one. <laughs> you are. Everybody here is a success story, but you're choosing to focus on what's wrong in your life instead of what's right in your life. Hate my body. That's all you got. My daughter's seven years old now. My son is three. But I can remember very clearly, those of you who have parents, how, you, you got small kids? Yeah. How old? Ten months. Ten months. Perfect. Walking yet? Yeah. Okay. See how it's smiling? See how yeah. you're smiling? At one point, you didn't know how to walk. At one point, your parents didn't give up on you. Mm -hmm. If you're a parent... How long would you wait for your child to learn how to walk? As long as it takes. As long as it takes. So at one point, you're laying on your back and you can't do nothing, and they roll over, and you're like, yes! Mm -hmm. Phenomenal, right? It's exciting. Then they crawl. Look, 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 look. Look at all the smiles. <laughs> look at all the smiles. Oh my God, he's, he's crawling. What happens when they stand up for the first time? Woo! Right? It's like, it's like the Super Bowl, man. We just hit a billion dollars. We won the lottery. And you're teaching that child. Wow. Kids looking at you like, what I do? <laughs> right? But you're celebrating every little victory. Every little victory. But you guys all accomplish those little victories. Then the first steps. Then the first tie in the shoes. Then the first A on the report card. You guys all did that. You all did that. You were all a success story. But you're focusing on what you don't have. That body's pumping blood through your veins, heart's beating, breathing. You're not even, hey, how many times did your heart just beat in the last minute? You have no idea. That body's taking care of you nonstop. Can everybody here see? <laughs> All right, right, right. But you can see. I have a neighbor, she's, she's blind. She can't see. She doesn't know if it's sunshine, sunny or dark. I've seen her walking at 4 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. She don't know what time of day it is. Think she appreciates her glass, her eyes? Think she appreciates her vision? Those of you who have kids, I have mine. I couldn't imagine not being able to see them. I have friends in wheelchairs. Everybody here can walk, right? Everybody walked to class today? Mm -hmm. When's the last time you thanked your legs? You have two eyes, two arms, two ears, two legs. You could see, touch, feel, taste, but you hate your body. Wow. Give that some thought, man. Like, what the hell did we just walk into today? Man, Elvira, you, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> but there's no, there, I, don't, I don't care about your grades. I want you to care about you. I want you to care about you, the individual, the person. Because I don't care what kind of, what, see, a lot of you guys are wearing the same you know, college outfit, right? But you're all individuals.
You're all different. You all came from different backgrounds. I don't give a, I don't care. I almost there. I almost slipped out. I don't care if you're brother and sister. Me and my sisters have a different. I have four older sisters. We all have a different outlook on how life was growing up, how our how our parents were. We're all an individual. You hate your body. You don't appreciate your body. You take things for granted. But your success here is going to go back to your success here. When you look in that mirror, start to look to appreciate, which makes you different. You don't want to look like everybody else. You, you see what I'm saying? You weren't born to fit in. You were born to stand out. And I get it. Society wants us. You know, it, it, it's hard to deal with uh, when you're growing up. You know, you might be a different nationality. You might be uh, a, a little black kid in a, in a classroom full of white kids. Or uh, I, I'm Puerto Rican, but I grew up in a black neighborhood uh, and went to a school that was mixed. I didn't fit in anywhere. I didn't fit in my own household. I'm the youngest, I got four older sisters. They couldn't relate to a boy, and I couldn't relate to girls. Okay? In my Hispanic community, because I didn't speak Spanish, I wasn't fluent, I was a coconut. Brown on the outside, white on the inside. Because I couldn't speak Spanish. I was a, yeah, coco, right? In the black community, I was a half-breed. You're a sand nigger, sorry language don't like it I'm sorry it's the truth it's my truth you don't have to make it your truth I didn't fit in I was a half-breed all right a lot of the white kids because I grew up in the projects Columbia Center Hammond Indiana I'm proud CCP you guys can all rep it right <laughs> I'm proud of where I came from I'm proud I'm proud of that neighborhood man the kids I grew up with but if you depending on on, on who you were Man, I was an outcast. Oh, you're one of them. You're poor, man. Oh, you live in Columbia Center? Man, I'm proud. I'm proud of that. It made me who I am. My struggles made me who I am. All those kids that picked on you or, or they, all the times that you didn't fit in, in into this world, it made you who you are. So instead of trying to dumb yourself down, man, be proud of that. You got to find what makes you different, not what makes you the same. It starts with loving this. So that's why we use health and fitness. Health and fitness is the tool. But the goal is success. Who wants to, what's, what's success to anybody here? What, if I ask you what is success? No idea, what's success? Achieving your goals. Achieving goals? Okay. Anybody else? What's success? Getting to where you're comfortable in life. Like, comfortable? Yeah, like you don't have to be in a mansion, but you know, you don't have to struggle for your rent. You're happy with what you do, you're happy with who you're around. Hey, old lady. <laughs> what's, what's success? Oh, you got it all. Right, there you go. <laughs> what's success? Um, I think it's um, something, whatever you believe in, whatever you want to achieve in your life. Success is going to be different for everybody in here. For some of you guys, it's getting a perfect score on the test. It might be getting the degree. It might be getting the job. It might be getting the relationship of your, of your dreams. Success is going to be different for every single person. Okay, I'll tell you this about success. Success for me and for a lot of people, and if you listen to what you guys all said, there's one common thread in what you guys all said. It's happiness. Happiness. Be happy with who you are as an individual. You might belong to a certain fraternity. You might, might belong to a certain group and label that success. That's fine. It might be driving a Ferrari. It might be having a mansion. I could tell you this, that even the, the quote unquote rich people that I've dealt with, they're not always happy. Money is not always going to make you happy. Learning to love this for what it is. See, you can't stop your, 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 your birth parents. You can't change, well, I hate to say you can't change the color of your skin because I look at some Michael Jackson, Sammy Sosa, different people like that, but 
who you are is who you are and that's a gift, but you gotta learn how to embrace it and you gotta stop beating it up and you gotta stop taking it for granted. So we talked about, somebody said uh, achievement for success. Happiness is directly tied to achievement. You wanna be successful? Keep striving, keep looking for more. Keep trying to accomplish something else. You made it, keep going. What happens after you make your first million? Get your second, get your third. What happens after you get your first degree? Go get another one, keep your continuing education. Most important education is what you get inside here. Okay, so that's what I do when I'm training clients for health and fitness. We're aiming to succeed, we're aiming to achieve, we're aiming for progress. So that little baby that once could roll over and could barely stand up, he can, get, he can crawl, well that's, that's my clients when they first come into the gym. They don't know how to do pick up a certain weight or they, they don't know how to do a certain exercise or a certain movement. But that was all of you guys at the beginning of school. How many of you guys kind of at the, at the beginning thought, oh crap, I might be in over my head? Because I'm a horrible student. Yeah, see, like, like, you doing okay now? And you can do better. And you can do better. And you can keep on doing better. And even if you're not doing okay, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. And it doesn't mean that you're in the wrong school. Or maybe I need to go get another profession. Maybe you just need to work harder. Maybe you need to get off your cell phones. Maybe you need to get off the social media. Maybe you need to stop watching the latest television show and dig, dig your nose into your homework. Thank you. <laughs> Happiness is tied to achievement. Anybody in here said they're depressed lately? Okay, you know what the opposite of depression is? Do you guys know what the opposite of depression is? Content. Huh, happiness? Content. No. Content. No. What's the opposite? It's expression. The opposite of depression is expression. If we want to get technical, if you depress something that's depressed, it's pushed in. Mm -hmm. All right? I've been, I've, I told you guys, I felt suicidal. I, let me tell you guys this. I've been, I've been homeless. I've been hungry. I borrowed $2 so I could buy a, one of them hard bags of sugar so I could mix it with water so I could eat, so I could feel like kill the hunger in my stomach. But I'm up in here in class where you guys are listening to a homeless dude, man. You guys are talking to a guy that, that, that has been broken to the point where he didn't want to live. The difference is de depression is being pushed in, expression is pushed out. Let who you are out. Quit trying to fit into this little box and if you ever try to put a square peg into a round hole, it don't work. That's you. That is you, individually. God blessed each and every one of us, me and you, with something special and instead of allowing yourself to express it you're keeping it in why because society is trying to tell you what you should be we just started talking like that at the beginning fitting into a box being what other people want you to be you gotta be who the hell you want to be so this is this is this is this is uh you guys are all in the same class you guys are all learning the same information so what's gonna make you different when you go get a job? You're gonna be, you're gonna be just like everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. Hell no. You're shaking your head, why? Because How you gonna like be? an individual, like you bring your own type of personality, your own, you can come to work being negative or you can come positive. People take a different outlook. People in this, this class right now may feel like, okay, whatever, like I don't care about it. Some other people are taking a different view on it, so they'll be like, okay, like I'm good, like I know all my stuff, like I'm on it, and some people are like, okay, when I get to the field, they just gonna teach me what I gotta do. Like, you're just taking a different outlook on things. Let so me ask this question. How many people here are trying to get this degree so they can get a job? Well, it's not a trick question, it's not a trick question. Raise those hands a little bit higher so I can, so I can kind of gauge. Who's here so that they could get a job? I mean, I don't care, can we call it a career? Call it a career. Who, who's here to get a job or a career? Okay, every hand should be here because I, what the hell are you here for? What you, <laughs> you just like learning stuff, right? But I'm a, let, me, let, me, let me throw that whole, let me throw that whole concept out the window. 
you're not going to get a job. You're not going to get a career. You are the job. You individually are the job. Anybody here listen to Jay-Z, rap, rap music, rap Jay-Z? Okay, even if you don't. There's a, there's a line that he uses uh, that he's saying. I can't remember the song. I'm not, I'm not the biggest Jay-Z fan. I'm not, I don't listen to rap too much. But he said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. I'm the business. When I listen to that, when I got my own head out of my butt, <laughs> When I got my head out of my ass, call it what it is, when I got my own head out of my ass, and I said, you know what, I'm so miserable trying to please this person, this person, I was ready to live life as a little hermit on an island because it didn't matter because I finally figured out that self-preservation was more important than fitting in. And I started to say, well, what if I could create a world where I was the superhero, where I was the king. You guys have heard the, the different songs like that, if I rule the world, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what, what would your world be like? Now I get it, I'm not trying to tell anybody here to not finish their schooling or anything like that. I'm asking you to take it so much, so serious. Take yourself so serious that they can't wait to hire her students. Because they'd be like, man, they come through her, her, them kids that had that same teacher, wow, that's the best students I ever had. Why? Because, man, they came to work punctual, consistent. They did the best damn job out there. Man, they get great grades. It ain't like, it ain't like let me ask you this question. I don't know how your, how your grading system works, but is it possible for everybody here to get A's? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. So why isn't it? everybody getting grades, grade A's, straight A's. The effort isn't there. That's part of it. Don't try. Well, why? Why? Why don't people try? No. Nope. I don't believe that there's a single bad human being in this world. I, listen, if you judge a fish by the way it climbs a tree, it's going to think it's stupid for the rest of its life. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I see that. You do? I do. All right. What would you say? If, if, if you judge a fish, right, by how it climbs a tree, right, but listen to it, right, it don't make no sense, a fish can't climb no tree, right, so maybe that fish is out of water, maybe he's in the wrong profession, maybe he's studying the wrong things, but you're still judging it by how he climbs a tree, well, let somebody else judge that fish. And if that fish wants to climb a tree, let them try. Follow your passions, follow your joys, follow the things that make you happy. But don't let anybody else define you or judge you. You make up your mind what you want to be. You know those pool noodles? Those, mm -hmm. Somebody's a millionaire off of that shit, man. <laughs> somebody's a, 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 probably a billionaire. Because they're at every store now. Walmart, Myers, they're everywhere. It's a little piece of foam. But if I believed in it, I may, I could help maybe make you believe in it. I can maybe make you believe in it. Next thing you know, hey, this works. Hey, it's not so stupid after all. Everybody here can get great straight A's. But if you're, the reason, you, maybe if you're not, maybe you're not enjoying the class. Maybe, maybe you just picked the wrong class. Some of you went to nursing school and chose not. Hey, good for you that you recognized before you kept spending money, before you went and got that degree that didn't mean much to you. If you're going to get a, a degree, get it right. Get it the best that you can. If I judged myself by what everybody else thought I should be, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys. Who in the hell are you talking to? Why, why aren't you talking to this dude? He was broke, he was homeless, he was suicidal, he was hungry, and you sitting here, he's talking in front of a bunch of class of people. You know why? Because I decided to make my own world for myself. I decided that while my dad might love me, I didn't recognize it and I didn't appreciate it, telling me I gotta be this, I gotta be that. He loved me from the best angle that he could your friends might be well-meaning, and they, your, your cousins, your uncles, your aunts, they might be like, don't do this, man, we don't want to see you fail. Guess what? Maybe that's how they failed, and they're putting those doubts on you. 
and hey, thank you, thank you for your concern, thank you for your, your well-intentioned, po- you're trying to be positive, but I'ma do me. I'ma do me. But when you decide to do you, that doesn't mean act selfishly, that doesn't mean I'ma go, I'm run, I'ma act and do whatever I wanna do. If you're gonna do you, do it to the best that you can possibly be. Be the best damn you you could be, and you're never too old to be that. You're never too old to be the best person you could be. You're never too late to turn your whole life around. I'm talking of, you're, like I said, I've already said, hey, he's been homeless, he's been this. I used to be, I ain't doing that again. I learned. I learned. It was around the time that I met Vi. It was around the time I met Vi. I, I asked myself, man, I thought God loved us all the same. Well, what kind of God is going to make me sad and depressed and this other person happy and joyful? I started my little brain. That little thing that was in there was bouncing off. Ding, 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 right? This little brain was this big probably at that time. What's going on, man? I, hey, wait, wait. Well, what made Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan. What made Oprah Winfrey? Oprah Winfrey. Something. Because Oprah Winfrey was a little black girl in the South. Got raped. In the South. I'm not trying to touch on any, let me, let me make sure that I address this right. I'm not trying to uh, uh, touch any sore subjects here, right? But call it what it was. In the South, they used to lynch people. Still do, probably. There's, I've heard stories, different things like that. So how could that little poor black girl make it to be one of the world's richest people in the world? How? Luck? Luck? Man, come on, man. Start asking yourself these questions. Start asking yourself, man, what made this? What, really start thinking about it. What made this person successful? Wow, she came from a worse situation than, than me. I don't care how bad you guys have it. I, I've, I've had clients, I, I, I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna, I, I've had some bad stories in my, in my office, talking with clients for the first time. Bad stories. And I've seen people turn their whole life around. Whole life around. Here, I'm, I'm gonna call it what it is. I had a client that got raped as a two-year-old. Give that some thought, those of you who are parents. She got raped as a two-year-old. Raped again as a fifth grader. One of the best freaking humans I know. Turn her life around. Making sure her kids don't have that same experience. Love her to death. And one of my most successful clients. Trust me. At the time I'm meeting her for the first time, they're all coming down. A lot of tears. Turn her life around. She chose not to be her past. She chose not to let her past define her future. Who you were before does not matter for the rest of your life. You can turn it around, but it ain't gonna happen on accident. It ain't gonna happen on an accident. It's gonna happen because I made up my damn mind. I, I had enough. I'm sick and tired. Enough is enough. You, you know what? We're in, this is Hammond. This is Hammond. Hammond, Indiana. We're in Hammond, Indiana. Who knows anybody from Hammond, Indiana? It ain't like, you know, Jenny, Jenny from the block, right? Jennifer Lopez. She's, she's rough the Bronx. She made people know, hey, you got to know my, my town. But just because you're from Hammond, Indiana, just because I'm from Columbia Center doesn't mean you can't be somebody. At the very minimum, those of you with parents, you're somebody, you're a superhero to your parent, to your kids. You're the first superhero. Are you a real superhero? Man, pull that, pull it out. Rep, rep it. Create your own logo. Create your own little cartoon. Put, put a little woman on a cape and do that with it. But you are a superman. You are a superwoman. But as long as you allow somebody else to define you for you, then you're never going to be anything more than that little box. You're never going to be anything more than that little box. My story is, is, is ongoing. I ain't done yet. Man, I can't wait. I created my job. At the time, I was suicidal. At the time, I was suicidal. I couldn't provide for my wife. My daughter was six years, uh, eight months old. Man, what am I gonna do? I can't collect unemployment. I left the steel mill voluntarily. I don't have a, this job, I don't have that. 
where do I go? Where do I go? Man, God, please help me. Please help me. God, what am I doing? And guess what? I had already, at that point when I started this, I had already been studying success. I've already been studying success for probably 10, 15 years at that point. I should have known better, right? But that's what life is, man. You slip, you fall, you get back up. That little baby, I just used the baby as an example. He falls, he bumps his head. How many times did you give up on him? None. You never gave up on him. Don't give up on yourself. So what you got an F? So what you flunked? So what that guy rejected you? You got out of a bad relationship. So what your mom and dad didn't treat you the way the other kids' mom and dad treated them? Get up. Get up. You did it before as an infant. You can do it now as an adult. Get up. You're not passing the grades that you want. Why? Because you're making excuses. You're not taking full accountability for it. You're blaming it on, oh, this is too hard. Maybe I should leave this. Maybe this isn't the course for me. Maybe you just need to work your ass off. Maybe you need to try a little harder. Maybe you need to look in the mirror and have a reality check with yourself and say, why am I here? If you remember, it's how I started this talk. Why are you here? You're all here by choice. You're all adults. And you don't have somebody standing over saying you have to. There's no gun to your head puts you in this school. You're here by choice. So if you're going to be here by choice, then damn it, do it to the best of your ability. Do everything to the best of your ability. What do you got to lose? They gonna laugh at you? So what, they're laughing at you anyway. You hate your body? Why? Why should that body reward you? You hate school? Why should school reward you? You gonna get out of it what you put into it. So if you're feeling depressed where you're getting pushed down, Maybe you need to push back out. Everybody in here should be the best damn, this should be the best damn class at this college. You know why? Because each individual should be the best person in this college. You got the best, what, what was that award you just got? Uh, instructor of the quarter. Instructor of the quarter. Well, we want instructor of the year. Working on it. Right? <coughs> We're not gonna settle for, oh man, good job. I got, a little, I got a little ribbon around my neck. Let me put it up on the shelf. No, man, you gotta keep running. Because when that little baby could learn how to stand up, you expected him to walk. When he could learn how to walk, you expected him to learn how to use the bathroom in the, in the toilet instead of in, his, in diapers. When he got there, you expected him to pass his grades. You expected him to learn how to tie his shoes. You expected him to learn how to do the ABCs. It don't stop. It does not stop because you got a job. It does not stop because you got a career. Your body doesn't stop getting better. You keep taking care of it. Your education will not stop when you pass this class. It's gonna continue for the rest of your life. And if you don't keep growing, you're gonna end up going backwards because there is no like, I made it. You never make it. You keep growing. Humans. Black, white, color, Asian, I don't give a crap what, what you are. Humans are designed to grow. Growth is happiness. I said that to you guys earlier. Happiness is tied to achievement. You want to keep growing? Keep achieving. You keep achieving, you're going to be happy. You keep achieving, you're going to keep growing. More money, better jobs, your relationship is going to blossom, your careers, your friendships are going to blossom. Trust me, everything blossoms as you keep growing. Those lessons you learned on how to stand up as a kid, keep them going. You don't expect a baby to learn how to run until it learns how to walk. Maybe you'll own your own office. Maybe this will be a stepping stone. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll piggyback this degree with another one. Maybe you'll be recognized by the president uh, of the world or whoever, maybe you'll take this and, and maybe, maybe, this, maybe this talk might push you somewhere else. It may run you out of this class. It might run you to, to getting better grades. I'm hoping that it gives you guys better grades. <laughs> I'm hoping more importantly than your better grades, I hope it makes you better personally. So anybody who did feel depressed, I hope you learn how to express. And I don't care about your age. I don't care about your color. You could be better. 
but you won't be better until you make up your mind to be better. If there's one thing you want to study besides these grades, is how do successful people do it versus unsuccessful people? We all know unsuccessful people. We all know successful people. What makes them different? So I'm gonna go over a couple, just a couple real quick things. Consistency, commitment, dedication, effort, hard work, persistence, perseverance. These are all tied together. Oprah Winfrey's got them, Michael Jordan's got them, Beyonce's got them, J-Lo's got them. Every successful person has all those, those, those common denominator characteristics. Do you? That's where you gotta start. What do all these successful people have in common and do I have them as well? Maybe you start taking stock of where you're at and then determining for yourself, hey, let me do a little bit better. Let me start to be more honest. Let me try to work the next grade up. The next grade up. You see what I'm saying? Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. No matter where you're at in your life, you could keep growing. But you're not gonna grow until you make up your mind to do so. This ain't about me being up here. This ain't about repping my business life power. You, like I said, you guys are talking to a guy who at one point was homeless, hungry, on purpose. So if you guys wanna succeed at anything, grades, relationships, jobs, business, it's gonna happen on purpose. You could take what I'm saying here today and, and it'll be gone. You'd be like, wow, man, that, that, that dude likes to talk a lot. Wow, you know, he lost me, I'm tired. And hey, you know what? Life power is not for everybody. Not everybody's for life power. Coach Lewis is not for everybody. Not everybody's for me. I've learned to be okay with that. And I hope you guys learn to be okay with that because everybody's not for you. That don't mean that the right people are not. That, that, that doesn't mean that you don't have people for you. But determine for yourself what that is. Don't let somebody else determine what that is for you. You determine that for yourself. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I beg, beg you guys to turn it up a notch, take accountability, quit making excuses, and say, you know what, from this day forward, I could, you could keep saying one of these days I'm gonna do this, one of these days I'm gonna that, or you could say today is day one, and I'm making that turnaround. There's a lot of baby falls down, but you're gonna get back up. There's a lot of stuff you can do, planners, you, you're gonna have to identify and make them your own in order to get where you wanna go. All you need to know is where you wanna go. Let God handle the details. You just put in the effort, you just work. If you want more, it'll come. It'll come, but it ain't gonna come on accident. It's gonna come because you made it happen. Does that make sense? Any questions? All right. All right, then we're about five minutes to break, okay? So, no questions?